Armor Quest Genesis is written by Ben Avery and drawn by Sherwin Schwartzrock. It is published by Alias Enterprises, and while it is labeled as Volume 1 and seems to hint that more volumes will come later, in the six years since this story came out, it is the only story in this series. I had some mixed emotions when I read this book. My first reaction was, boy, this book certainly feels a lot like Star Wars. And in this book's defense, any story that follows the adventures of a young boy who lives a mundane life and then is taken away from that life and goes on many glorious adventures is going to ring very similar to Star Wars. This can also be found in The Hobbit, Harry Potter, and The Dark Crystal. This kind of story doesn't even originate in Star Wars. George Lucas studied Joseph Campbell's works on mythology, and the air quotes Hero's Quest is virtually ripped straight from the page and put into film for Star Wars, and also any other story that follows that pattern. But there's following a basic formula that has proven to work many times, and then there's what seemed to me, when reading this book, taking even the same archetypes as the first Star Wars film, and more or less using them in this story. Of course, there's young Timothy, who is a farm boy in a small town, and he leaves the town to go train with the Knights of the Way, who are surprisingly not extinct, like the Jedi. He is joined by Bernard, who is a stupider version of Han Solo, and Kanika, one of the Knights of the Way, who is what I imagine Princess Leia would be like if she was more of a stoic warrior. Then there's the old man who knows a great deal more than he lets on. We don't know his name, but he is called the Shepherd but we can call him Yoda or Ben Kenobi. Heck, the helmet the hero is being bequeathed with on the cover looks like it belongs to Boba Fett. To add insult to injury, this book even seems to take place in a world very similar to what you might see in Star Wars. When I picked up this book at my local library, I thought I was going to be getting into a Legend of Zelda or Lord of the Rings type story. A fantasy story that more or less follows the hero's journey as detailed by Joseph Campbell, if you will. But, and I don't mean this as an insult, what I actually found was more of a Star Warsian blend of fantasy and futuristic science fiction. Imagine if Frodo Baggins was walking through a world that also is inhabited by the Jetson family. That's more or less what you have in this book. One minute, the Knights of the Way are riding giant eagles and fighting dragons in midair and the next, they're using their rocket boots and talking with the commander via a holographic Skype call of some kind. I have posited before that superhero comics are in part so appealing to me because they utilize a blend of different story genres, and I think this one is a nice surprise in that it skillfully blends the old world fantasy tropes with futuristic science fiction elements. And if Ben Avery is having trouble thinking of what to do next in his story, he isn't limited by what is usually done in a fantasy story. He can rely on the tricks of the trade from two wheelhouses, if you will. So anyway, I said that it seemed like this book was basically Star Wars with some of the names changed around. That might not have been entirely fair. I do think there are some striking similarities between the two works, but if you are put off by what you perceive to be a lack of originality in stories, I wouldn't give this book a pass just yet. In six issues, this book is able to show us glimpses of this world and make each issue a standalone tale that gives us a complete story, while also making each issue a piece in Timothy's larger story arc. Also, what I was quite surprised by was that this book is actually published by a company of Christian authors and artists, and so most of the books put out by the company are heavily biblical like a story featuring David and Goliath, or a story about Moses leading the children of Israel. But this book takes the route that C.S. Lewis did when constructing his Narnia series of books, or his Space Trilogy. He takes the very basic ideas and themes of Christianity and constructs a fictional narrative around those themes. Someone who is interested in passing the time in reading a comic book might not want to read a story about David and Goliath, and so it seems to me that Avery is targeting those people by writing a story with strong Christian themes about science fiction knights fighting dragons. Once I found out this book was part of a publishing house that tries to put more of a religious spin on books than what you would usually find at a larger company, some of the dialogue in the book made much more sense to me. There are definitely verses taken right out of the Bible and only modified slightly and used as passages that the Knights of the Way study. 
things like crypts that are beautiful on the outside but filled with dead bones on the inside, double-edged swords, and an evil creature that speaks in half-truths to corrupt an innocent, naive mind. These things are all straight from the Bible and are used in ways that won't feel preachy to somebody who might not be familiar with these elements as they were presented in the Bible. Because this book is presenting a biblical message about relying on your friends and helping those who cannot help themselves, among other things, it is a very family-friendly book, which is also something you won't often find at a larger publishing house for comic books. I often hear people talk about how comic books are in trouble, and how the core audience is mostly people in their 40s, and while that might be true for superhero comics, I definitely feel like Armor Quest is trying to aim itself at a younger audience, and I would not hesitate at all in giving this to a kid of any age, as I think it would be highly enjoyable for children. If you're an adult, you might see through some of the things I've detailed now, like the similarities with Star Wars and the Narnian-esque presentation of biblical themes. But if you can get past those things, I would also recommend this book to adults as well, as it really is a fun and refreshing story.